The Galactic Empire, despite being incredibly powerful and having one of the largest militaries ever to exist in the galaxy, had one very big fatal flaw. It sank far too many of its resources into benign superweapons such as the Death Star, Operation Cinder satellites and many others. Now as we know, this is pretty bad, as we've discussed numerous times on this channel. There was one Imperial commander however, Admiral Thrawn, who campaigned against this and wanted the Empire to spend its resources very differently. So what would have happened if the Empire was a bit more practical about its military expenditures? So the Thrawn Doctrine, as it is often named, means that essentially resources would be spent on improving the current Imperial military structure. More powerful cruisers, TIE fighters, armour for troops, intelligence systems. Essentially, it would involve making loads of smaller investments and spreading these resources around different departments, as opposed to concentrating them in one place under one asset. Traditionally, what the Empire does is it spends the majority of its money on the Navy, which, don't get me wrong, is incredibly powerful. The Navy is arguably the backbone of the Empire. However, how the great geniuses in the Navy spent these resources is pretty questionable. Arguably, these superweapons, quote-unquote, didn't really help the Empire that much. The Death Star, for example. Sure, it had the capability to destroy worlds. And the idea was, is that it would force the people of the galaxy to submit to Imperial rule through sheer terror alone. However, is this really something that should have been a priority for the Empire? They'd yet to come across an enemy that they couldn't defeat in a straight fight. Sure, the rebels were annoying, but realistically, they were never going to be able to take over. And realistically, the Death Star, for example, is a very quickly depreciating asset. We know that within a few decades, Palpatine had managed to build an entire fleet of planet-killing Star Destroyers in the middle of nowhere during his exile on Exegol. So, simply put, it seems like all of these superweapons become obsolete pretty quickly. Now, we have discussed this theory a bit before, but for this rethink, we're going to be saying that Thrawn inspires Tarkin and Palpatine the two real decision makers within the Empire to reconsider their military strategy. Projects such as Stardust's funding will be dramatically cut short. Some aspects will likely continue to operate, such as research on the super laser. However, the actual construction and massive operating costs involved in funding it and keeping it a secret all but stop. Instead, this funding is spread out amongst a surge of different projects. One that we know that Thrawn was very passionate about is, for example, the TIE Defenders, but this could be anything. More powerful handheld energy weapons, better armour, dark trooper droids, funding for ISB surveillance programmes. Essentially far more diverse ranges of military research and construction. And after this is developed and tested, it can then be mass manufactured and used across the galaxy. And I think we all have to admit that this would be pretty amazing. Just imagine the Empire but been far more formidable and well equipped. Armies and fleets spread across the galaxy that would make the rebellion and insurgencies flee in terror. Take, for example, the standard stormtrooper. Pretty rubbish, right? Their armour was cheap, weapons were prone to jamming and overheating, their training was pretty terrible. And when they were injured, most of the time they would die because the Empire just didn't care about them. They'd rather just bring in a few more stormtroopers to take their place. Now, think about all of the difference better funding and more investment would make. Stronger armour, more reliable weapons, better training, maybe even cybernetic enhancements. Better medical care so that troops can survive and become veterans. And this has massive knock-on effects. Higher survival rates means that more veteran troops who are far better experienced. You probably didn't get a huge amount of veteran stormtroopers, at least those who saw combat, because realistically they were disposable to the Empire. But we would see legitimate improvements to the Empire's command structure as actual competent individuals who have proven themselves worthy promote their way into commanding positions. And this can all go far further. More funding for military projects means that more weapons can be produced cheap as knowledge of them improves and it becomes easier to manufacture. Think about projects such as the Dark Troopers. If these were properly funded, they could have been developed decades earlier. And a few years later, with more knowledge about them, 
they could have been mass produced on an insane scale. Issues that we saw in the Dark Troopers, such as the amount of power they used, could have been weaned out, and we could have seen their mass use across the galaxy. So imagine a group of stormtroopers patrolling the streets of Lothal along with a dark trooper. You would have to be either a very bold or a very stupid rebel to try anything. And this is just the army, what about the navy? More powerful ships, faster, stronger, more efficient allowing Imperial fleets to operate in the unknown regions for far longer without the need to resupply and refuel. If projects such as the TIE Defender program took off and these ships became commonplace in the Empire, Imperial Starfighters would be lethal. Remember how powerful just one TIE Defender was? Now imagine whole squadrons of them. We need to remember at the end of the day, the Rebels aren't well funded. There was really no other force in the galaxy that could even slightly match the Empire's sheer amount of resources. So most of the Rebels' assets are pretty terrible. Their ships weren't really anything special. Sure, the X-Wings were pretty impressive, and it makes no sense whatsoever why a group of Rebels would have better ships than the most powerful and best funded organisation in the entire galaxy. I mean, we see the Y-Wing for an example, which is a relic of the Clone Wars, run rings around Imperial ships. And that's just insane. So incredibly powerful ships would make all the difference. Now, what are the bigger ramifications of having this super powered empire? Now, power wise, it's going to be far more effective. Sure, it's not going to have any planet killing super weapons, at least not at the moment, but it doesn't need them their military would be able to do whatever it wants, just far more precisely and with far less collateral damage. Now, we do need to remember the fact that rebellions and insurgencies are always going to still exist, but with a more powerful everyday imperial military, their support would wane. You see, most people weren't really scared of stormtroopers. Well, they were to an extent, but this was mostly just because of their numbers. They knew that, that said stormtroopers operated with the backing of the Empire. If you did something to a stormtrooper, then there would be far more turn up. But realistically, one stormtrooper or a small group, most people weren't that bothered about. And any rebels out there who thought that they could attack a group of Imperials and that they could get away afterwards were absolutely fine with it. Take Ezra Bridger, for example. He was a child and he fought against them because he knew he could. However, imagine if the Imperials were actually dangerous. You'd be very, very foolish to even attempt it. Essentially, we're looking at an empire that would command so much more respect. Ultimately, I just don't see how the empire couldn't win. It would expand limitlessly outside the reaches of their galaxy. Its technology would be far more advanced than in our own timeline, and probably even far more advanced than where it was in the Rise of Skywalker. And this is possibly the greatest failure of the Empire. They had limitless opportunities, almost limitless wealth, almost limitless power, and they spent it all on these pipe dreams of super weapons that, although were intimidating and scary and sure, had a lot of symbolic value, just weren't useful. They just turned into massive resource pits, resources that could have and should have been spent elsewhere. But what do you guys think? What would have happened if the Empire had this form of military funding? And can you think of any downsides to this? If they weren't using things such as the Death Star, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video today. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. If so, please do remember to like, share and sub as it is really appreciated and it helps the channel grow. Also, don't forget to tick the bell and follow me on Twitter at the Law Guy to get regular updates. But most importantly, thank you so, so much for watching. But most importantly, thank you so, so much for watching. I really do hope that you enjoyed. I hope you're all having a great day and you're all staying safe. And I'll see you next time.